What's up, nerdy nerdettes? It's time for a Superpower Shorty. This superpower is a splinter off the branch of sand manipulation. So sit down and get set for glass manipulation. With the ability to help the visually impaired decorate temples and palaces and mimic an invisible shield. Hmm. Users of hyalokinesis can create, shape, and manipulate glass, an amorphous, non-crystalline, solid material that exhibits glass transition, which is the reversible transition in an amorphous material from a hard, relatively brittle state to a molten and rubber-like state. Simply put, glass is a material that can shift from a shapeless, pseudo-fluid-like state, meaning it mimics a liquid but it really isn't one, to a solid form that contains a certain level of transparency or see-throughness. But for everyone's sanity and the sake of this video, you guys can just think of soda lime glass because that's the most commonly referred to form that everyone thinks of anyway. Think glass jars, windows, etc. The funny thing about this rare power is that glass, the substance, has always had an intimate relationship with sight. So much so that it can be argued that without the sense of sight, glass in its current incarnation probably wouldn't exist. Maybe. I can guarantee you that it wouldn't be as specified as it is now though. But you know what else wouldn't exist or be as clear cut? <laughs> That's right, all the crystal clear info and shattered pieces of knowledge I've collected and placed back together. And since you guys don't have to worry about cutting yourself while you're learning more about this power, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. I've done my due diligence, so sit back, sip on some shea, and on a completely unrelated note, if someone can send me an article on how to remove glass from a human hand, it would be very much appreciated. I, uh, need to know. For a friend. Okay, so if eyes are the window to the soul, then glass is window to what? And no, I don't want you guys to say anything like doors or cars. I said that to show the not-so-loose metaphor between the concept of glass and sight. Glass being very symbolic is oftentimes conflated with the concept of enhancement and rebirth, and to a lesser extent, protection. If you think about how glass is used in both previous and modern times, it'll be hard to find a culture on this planet who didn't have access to the element in its many, many, many different forms, or at least a way to create it, especially considering that the previous elements needed to make it were and are still in such abundance on this planet. The substance itself can be found in buildings, vehicles, machinery, and in art. Yep from stained glass all the way to tinted windows, regular windows, screens of computerized devices, and even the cooled residue from volcanic eruptions, aka obsidian, which has been used for weapons in the past, and the most important things of all time, eyewear, looking glasses, telescopes, and binoculars of all types. <laughs> I don't need to prove my point further, so let's just keep going. Like mentioned earlier, the rebirthing aspect of glass hangs heavier on the symbolic side of the scale. But don't worry, it still makes plenty of sense. Let's look at the various ceremonial cultures around the world. The first one that pops into my head is obviously Greek, maybe Judaism. If I understand and am summarizing this correctly without getting too pacific like the ocean, the shattering of glass represents a commitment to the union of the two beings no matter what happens to or during the marriage. Essentially, a death and rebirth of the two beings that become one. Kinda ironic when glass is normally one piece that shatters into many others. <laughs> But it's the thought that counts, I guess. Want another example? What about when people used to christen ships with glass balls full of whatever funky liquid it contained? The glass acts as a vector transferring the goodwill of the ship's caster and breaking on the hull, which symbolized the birth of an expedition or voyage. Then give your windshield, glasses, or a window to your house. Window pane? Anyway, I bet you guys are grateful that that specific piece of glass stopped a lot of incoming bugs, birds, and bile from getting to know you in a more intimate, matter. A really cool thing about this ability that's noteworthy is its relation to light manipulation. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. As briefly mentioned in light manipulation, check that video out, the link is in the description, is its reflection and refraction properties. Most, if not all forms of light-based abilities such as lasers and light-focused beams of energy will normally be rendered completely useless as they just pass through or around the transparent glass, allowing you to confuse, frustrate, and bully most light manipulation users as well as having the potential power to manipulate perception to a certain degree, just like its sibling power, mirror manipulation. Like I said before, this power can be considered extremely rare in the sense of its portrayal because normally, it'll be shown as a creative byproduct of the use of other earth-based powers such as sand and or magma manipulation, remember obsidian before. Or it can normally be seen in combination with a sturdier element like 
metal manipulation or something along those lines. So it normally won't be seen without the combination of the previously mentioned elements, but in the rare instances it is portrayed, we humans normally like to see it in pieces, which shows the user using deadly shards in battle to impale, slice, or just devastate their opponents. So just expect the user of this ability to want to slice you up rather than help you see better. Now with the power to manipulate glass comes the natural ability to attack with, defend with, and control glass with glass attacks. The user can generate their own source of glass completely separate from outside sources with glass generation. The user can harden the glass, giving it fortitude beyond what is normally possible with glass solidification. And since they can harden it, the next step is to shape it into forms both simple and complex with hyalokinetic constructs. A byproduct of that ability is controlling what small pieces break off your glass via glass shard manipulation. That's a nasty little ability. And since you can create, shape, and control what comes off the glass, why shouldn't you be able to take it in in whatever manner you see fit with glass absorption? At this point, you and glass are pretty familiar with each other. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I don't care if you do or not, because if you absorb the element into your being, then you should be able to copy the properties of the amorphous solid via glass mimicry. And since you're changing your physical form into glass, then it wouldn't be a stretch to say that you can replace missing pieces of you restoring your original form via glass regeneration. From there, just shift the previous two powers outward and transform an outside target into glass with glass transmutation. You want to show a user of light manipulation just how futile it is to attack you? Then you can infuse glass with whatever combative capabilities you possess via hyalokinetic combat. And lastly, fitting into the esoteric themes of this abilities, Users that are gassing themselves up, or in this case, glassing themselves up, <laughs> are able to control the properties of their own glass, allowing for more powerful abilities such as reflection, manipulation. But that's as far as I'm going with that because this ability can spread out into other abilities and I, uh, well, more videos is coming. And there you have it, glass manipulation in a nutshell. Huh, shell. Pretty solid ability in my opinion, except for the fact that a main weakness of this power is its known brittleness. So, unless you can solidify it to a significant degree, stay out of china shops and keep an eye out for raging bulls. I did mention earlier that light manipulation users will take one look at you and run, but in all honesty, that only applies to adept level users and the two ranking below, novice and apprentice. Any expert or master level user of light manipulation will know that light in most forms is known to produce heat. So if your glass isn't heat resistant, you could be melted or shattered by the sudden temperature change. Certain frequencies can shatter glass, so users of sound and or vibration manipulation are to be avoided or placated. You might only be able to manipulate outside sources or specific types of glass. Figuring out where you are or who you are will make this ability a bane or a boon. And lastly, the user's own knowledge, skills, and talents will determine how far you go with an ability like this.